It's been nearly 25 years since we've seen the Defender nameplate here in America, and since then, obviously, a lot of things have changed, including the segment in which the original Defender used to compete in. Now, in that time frame, Jeep has been gorging themselves on Wrangler sales to the tune of nearly 250,000 units every year, which prompted Ford to, of course, bring back the Bronco name, which then prompted Land Rover to bring back this beast that you're seeing right here. This is the all-new 2021 Land Rover Defender. It shares a name with the original model and that's really it because as you can see this has been reborn of course for the 21st century it's built off of its own unique aluminum chassis that Land Rover says is the strongest they've ever developed it comes standard of course with a permanent four-wheel drive system with a low range transfer case a locking rear differential and you get a choice of either a turbocharged four-cylinder or a turbocharged inline six with an electric supercharger and a 48 volt mild hybrid system so now that the Defender is back after a nearly 25 year hiatus was this all new one worth the wait that's what we're here to find out. Hey guys, before we get started on the video, I wanna give a quick shout out to Omaze for sponsoring this video and supporting this channel. You know, I've been working with Omaze for a little over a year now, and I have to say, they've given a lot of viewers the opportunity to win some pretty insanely cool cars. However, this car kind of takes the cake for me because Omaze is giving one lucky person the opportunity to win a brand new 2021 Audi RS6 Avant plus $20,000 in cash. As you guys know, the RS6 Avant is the crown jewel of fast wagons. It's the wagon that we enthusiasts have been clamoring Audi for for years. I know when I first saw the wagon back at the LA Auto Show a couple years ago, I was practically salivating over its gorgeous styling, its standard 591 horsepower, four liter bi-turbo V8, V8 with quattro all-wheel drive. Remember, this wagon looks like a family car on the outside, but it gives you the ability to sprint to 60 in around 3.1 seconds. Audi's latest super wagon goes head to head, of course, with the Mercedes AMG E63, but I personally think it looks a lot better. So if you guys are interested in winning this wagon plus $20,000 in cash, be sure to visit omaze.com forward slash RR Audi RS6, where you can go in and enter for a chance to win and support a great cause like the Peterson Automotive Museum. So what are you waiting for, guys? I haven't had a chance to actually review the RS6 wagon, but here is your chance to actually win this car plus $20,000 in cash. So again, be sure to visit omaze.com forward slash RR Audi RS6, where you can enter for a chance to win this amazing prize and support a great cause. And now let's get back to the video. So I was about eight years old when the original Defender left US showrooms because it didn't really do well in terms of sales. Land Rover at the time was kind of struggling and buyers were looking for vehicles that were just much more fuel efficient. However, those times have passed and now we are at a time frame where a lot of people are looking for an SUV like this that portrays a very rugged image that can also go off-roading because Jeep has been seeing some strong sales. And of course, Mercedes with their G-Wagon has again been seeing strong sales. Let's take a look at the design of this all new Defender. Now, first of all, just like the original Defender, Land Rover is offering it in Defender 90 and Defender 110. This one here is the 110 because it's the longer wheelbase four-door version. And this one here is also the Defender X, which means it's the top of the line model. It has some unique styling elements. Namely, you're going to notice this black painted grill or bonnet as the Europeans or the British would call it. I think it looks particularly good in this gray exterior color. I also like this kind of diamond plated finish here on the grill, which really makes this thing look tough. It makes it look rugged. It really goes well with, of course, the all aluminum chassis, which Land Rover says is the strongest they've ever developed. It's a stronger platform than even the Range Rover. Now, looking at the rest of the front end, I love the way this looks here. It's a very, you know, blocky, very masculine look. You've got the standard full LED headlights. This particular one here has an upgraded LED with a very distinctive signature LED daytime running light. You have LED turn signals, LED fog lights, LED low and high beams. And then the X model includes this starlight satin silver finish on the front of the uh, front uh, air dam and as well as on the rear. I think this is, again, a vehicle that's very distinctive. In my week's worth of testing, I had a lot of people looking at this thing, particularly Jeep owners. So again, Land Rover really knocked it out of the park when it comes to the styling of this vehicle. Now, Defender 90 and Defender 110 used to mean the wheelbase length of the, those models. Now, obviously, with the new version here, Land Rover has made this vehicle significantly larger. And really, they should call it Defender 100 and Defender 120 because the wheelbase of the four-door model is around 119 inches long. It's nearly 120 inches long. 
Its overall length at 197 inches long is also significantly larger, but although you should know that the spare tire at the back adds about 10 inches of length, uh, really in all actuality this is around 187 inches long. It's about the same size as a Jeep Wrangler uh, Unlimited Rubicon model, which is again a really relatively small vehicle, but this looks a lot bigger when you see it in person. Now I want to talk about the wheel options of course. Uh, an 18 inch steel wheel is actually standard if you guys go for the base base model. A lot of people like that for its heritage design. I particularly love the 20 inch wheels with the dark gray finish that you get on the X model. The X model also includes these orange painted calipers and all Defender 110 models will come standard with an adjustable air suspension. If you guys go for the Defender 90, a coil spring suspension is standard and that gives you around 8.7 inches of ground clearance. When you go for the air suspension and you jack it up into off-road mode, it'll give you a total of 11.5 inches of ground clearance, which is again rivaling that with what you're going to get from like a Jeep Wrangler and Ford's upcoming Bronco. Now, looking at the rest of the styling here at the side, I love the box look to it. You have this color contrasting roof with this really nice panoramic sunroof as well. And this is also an area where a lot of people are going to talk with the new Defender. This right here are the Alpine windows or porthole windows. This is again a throwback to the original Defender. I'll show you what that looks like on the inside. And this panel here also stands out in a very interesting way. You can actually paint this black if you don't like it how it's body colored right now. And really, I think the Defender looks best in the 90 for configuration where it only has two doors. The 110, you can see it's been stretched out. The wheelbase itself is pushed, or the wheels are pushed out into the corners, which is going to help with interior space and give this thing a really interesting stance. It's also a really wide vehicle at nearly 80 inches wide. So again, it looks very distinctive. Now at the rear of the vehicle, you can see these taillights are a throwback to the original model. However, they have been modernized. They are full LED design, LED turn signals. LED brake lights. I like the fact that you get a full size spare, which is necessary when you're driving a vehicle like this off roading because you need to be able to get access to the spare as well. It's not tucked underneath the vehicle. And then down here, you can see it's got these orange recovery tow hooks at the back, which is actually optional. And you have more of that satin silver finish here on the rear bumper, which really gives it a very premium upscale uh, look to it. Now, again, another classic styling cue with the Defender is this side opening rear lift gate, which by the way, it does open on the wrong side for me. If you're gonna park this thing on the street, it should open the other way. Uh, but with this particular one here, it only has the second row seats. It doesn't have the optional third row. You get around 34 cubic feet of space. I will say this material here is great for when you wanna get things like wet and dirty, but it does make stuff slide around. I'd recommend getting a cargo net. There's also a little bit of under seat storage or underfloor storage under there, uh, which is pretty nice. Uh, and with the second row seats up, you get 34 cubic feet of space. If you fold down the second row, Land Rover says you get around 79 cubic feet of space. So it's pretty obvious that the new Defender is one attractive looking vehicle from the outside, but what about the interior? Land Rover has always been pretty strong in this area as well. And if you guys remember the first, the old Defender, that interior was very just bare bones. Land Rover nowadays represents um, luxury, technology, and comfort to go along with some of your off-road capability. Now, as you can see, looking at this Defender's interior at a glance. Now, the first thing I'm noticing, I love the interior color combination of my tester. They call this Heritage Tan. Uh, it has kind of like a two-tone look, of course, with the black. It's got this very nice, durable, water-resistant water material here on the part of the seat. The leather here, of course, is upgraded because I have the Defender X model. If you guys go for a base 90 version, that actually will come with cloth seats and it won't have cruise control. But this one here is the more luxury-oriented model. Although you do notice some elements about the Defender's cabin that doesn't exactly scream Range Rover, but you can tell it is kind of in the same family. Now, looking at the door panel here, you can see a lot of exposed screw heads, which again, adds to that heritage feel and gives you that impression of durability, like this thing is kind of built to withstand abuse. Um, the door panel materials are soft touch leather here on this upper portion and the lower portion over there. And you have a lot of storage cubbies over here on the door pockets, uh, which is really nice. More of those exposed screw heads, which is also, again, uh, pretty cool to see in the interior. When I shut the door, the door has a nice solid sounding thunk. Remember, this is the stiffest platform that Land Rover has ever developed. It's even stiffer, of course, than the Range Rover's platform. Now, uh, here's the key fob for the vehicle. This is the current Land Rover key fob. It is a little bit on the larger side. They also offer an activity key if you guys uh, want, which is similar to what I've shown you in some other Jaguar and Land Rover products where it can get wet. It has basically just works like a watch. Uh, the button here to fire up the engine is right here by the shifter. And you can see when the engine starts up, you hear that typical straight six snarl. 
It actually lets you rev it up, but there is quite a bit of rev ham hang, but that engine is super smooth. That's typically what you associate with a straight six. So we'll talk about that, of course, later on in the test drive. Looking at the rest of this cabin, let me talk about the interior materials because Land Rovers, and you guys know, are not inexpensive vehicles. And this upper portion of the dash here looks like a hard touch plastic, but it's actually slightly padded, but it also has a rubberized texture to it. Um, the dash vents are interesting design. They're way up here, uh, which I found to be a little bit on the awkward side when I was trying to direct the airflow to my actual face. Uh, I like the actual leather stitching that you get here. This piece right here, uh, you can kind of customize this and get it wrapped in several different um, colors and whatnot. This is actually part of the whole structure of the vehicle. Remember, the interior has a lot of nostalgia in here. You can see it spells out Defender there on the passenger side and on the driver's side airbag. The horn also has a nice solid or nice meaty sound to it. It doesn't sound are weak like you know some vehicles that I've tested with or modern vehicles with their horns but the steering wheel itself is a power tilt telescoping feature um, Land Rover and Jaguar put it on the right side as opposed to the left you guys saw me reach for the left side first that's kind of what I'm used to the steering wheel itself is unique to the Defender I like the way it looks I like how it's a four spoke design uh, as you can see it's also a heated wheel that's included on this particular trim the seats on my tester are also heated and cooled which is nice you have a 12 inch reconfigurable LCD display over here where you can kind of change change the way this looks. You can even put the GPS in there. If you'd like, it's controlled via this little panel right here where you can choose all different kinds of sources and whatnot. So this is, of course, uh, a modern vehicle with a lot of modern tech features, and it's what a lot of buyers are demanding. This here, of course, is their new infotainment system. This is a 10-inch touchscreen infotainment system. It's called Pivi Pro, which is a really interesting name. Um, but this is, of course, the debut of their new infotainment system. As you can see, it has Android Auto and Apple CarPlay. It is not wireless though. You can see my phone is connected down here. Uh, there's also a wireless phone charging pad over here. But I will say that the responsiveness of the screen is still a little bit on the laggier side. I think the graphics look beautiful. I like the way, you know, Waze looks when you pull it up. It also looks pretty nice. See, there's the GPS for this vehicle. Land Rover has been kind of improving this over the years where they're trying to make this snappier, a little bit quicker. Push this button over here. You can see that brings up all your usual sources and apps. You can see typical Land Rover fashion. They have a four by four information um, icon. They have weight sensing. This vehicle will allow you to go through 35 inches of water, which is class leading, at least that's what Land Rover says. There's a low traction launch. You can access all your cameras, your towing, eco data and whatnot, vehicle dimensions. I wasn't expecting this. The car actually will tell you how big the vehicle is and it shows you your breakover and your departure angle and your approach angles, which I think is pretty cool. You can even change it to show it in feet instead of meters because we uh, go by that system here in America. Um, over here, you can see, let's look at the cameras wonderful camera quality resolution. This is actually standard on every Defender 110 model, which actually surprised me. I really love how Land Rover gives you all these different views, of course, which is necessary if you're going to be taking this vehicle into off-road situations where you're afraid of damaging it or you don't want to curve a wheel or you don't want to you want to see if your car your truck can clear a rock or an obstacle this is very important when you're going off-roading it has uh, front and rear parking sensors you can see there's an on-road mode there's an off-road mode there's even a tow mode when you guys are planning to load up a trailer you can see um, different views to kind of help you do that so again this is all very nice but as you can still see it's still a little bit laggy and slow at times um, it is it is significantly improved of course versus you know, the previous system that I've tested in other Land Rovers, but it still could be beefed up in terms of the processing speed. Land Rover says this new system, the PIVI Pro system, has um, over-the-air software updates. So, of course, this is only going to get better as time goes on, where Land Rover will be able to push updates to the system to improve speed, improve usability. Um, so, overall, I like this system. Um, I just think that it does have a little bit of a slight learning curve, and I think it needs to add wireless Apple CarPlay and wireless Android Auto. Now, over here, you can see uh, hard buttons, of course, where you can access the air suspension for the vehicle, the climate control, like I said, the low-range transfer case, traction control, um, your climate zone is over here. You have a volume knob, and then this controls the eight-speed automatic. There's a little trigger here at the front. Push that to go to reverse, kick it back to go to drive, and then push P to go to park. Down here, you can see two USB ports, a USB-C, nice storage area there where my phone fits. And then you can see here, genuine wood trim, which also feels nice. It's a low gloss uh, sheen wood. Big cup holders over here, wireless phone charger, and then there's a nice padded armrest over here. And I like the way this looks right here. You can actually option this in to be a refrigerator if you'd like. My tester doesn't have that feature, but it's a pretty deep storage cubby, which is nice. The seats, I find them to be pretty comfortable and supportive. They don't look like much, 
But I, as I mentioned earlier, these are the upgraded seats with the Heritage tan interior, which is nice. Uh, the cabin is full of some LED lighting in here, which is also good. Um, your panoramic sunroof control is over here, which you can see. This one goes all the way to the back, in addition to having those um, really cool Alpine um, roof windows the, at the roof of this vehicle. That is very much a throwback to the original Defender. And then over here, you can see the glove box is on the smaller side. It's damped, but it's not lined with felt. So overall, the cabin definitely gives you that big commanding view of the road. It has all the modern tech features that you like, including a heads-up display on this particular one. And it also feels relatively roomy in here with plenty of headroom. So this is a cabin that, while it isn't quite as luxurious as a Range Rover, it feels very much um, durable and it has modern tech features like the 14 speaker Meridian sound system on my tester, which sounds pretty good as well. So I think a lot of modern and you know the faithful buyers are going to appreciate what Land Rover has thrown in with this new Defender. Now getting into the back seat of the Defender 110, this is the one that you're gonna want if you guys plan to actually carry your family and friends back here because not only do you get the four full-size doors as opposed to the two-door model, Land Rover says you get around 39 inches of legroom back here. 39 inches is a surprisingly good amount. This is a little bit more than what you're gonna get in the Jeep Wrangler Unlimited. I don't know what the Ford Bronco is gonna offer yet because I haven't had a chance to drive that vehicle just yet. What I do like is the fact that the floor is almost completely flat back here. Land Rover actually gives you four-zone automatic climate control on this particular one here, and you also have heated rear seats. Uh, which is nice. No cooled rear seats, however, although it looks like there could be a spot for one if you guys, you know, have that feature available in other parts of the world. You also have two USB ports here and two regular 12 volt power outlets. And overall, the back seat itself is pretty comfortable. Um, keep in mind, this one here is just the two door or is the five seater version. They also offer a two or third row, which will seat two people. And you can also get another option where you could actually put one more seat in the front, in the middle between the two between the center console, which is interesting. I haven't seen that one yet, but you can get that six seater configuration in the uh, third row or in the two door model as well. Now, one of the th other things I'm also noticing, the panel roof does let in a lot of light, although I'm not entirely sure why there's this random black bar here where they could have just made it one continuous piece of glass and these Alpine windows. These are a really interesting feature, although you can't really see much, but this is supposed to be there when you're out there on safaris trying to look at animals or birds or whatever out in the sky. So again, very, very nostalgic, great throwback, but the back seat back here is relatively comfortable. And if you fold this armrest down, you get cup holders, although you should know that these rear seats don't recline or slide forward in any way. Now under the hood of the modern Defender, we're of course gonna find two available modern powertrains. The base version is a two liter turbocharged four cylinder with around 296 horsepower. That's the, that engine should be fine, but this is probably the one that you want if you guys plan to tow and haul heavy loads. This is the company's three liter turbocharged straight six cylinder engine. I sampled this engine, of course, in the latest Range Rover. It's augmented by a 48 volt mild hybrid system, which allows it to kind of fill in the gaps to kind of mitigate the lag. Uh, all combined, this engine produces 395 horsepower and 406 pound-feet of torque. Land Rover essentially calls it P300 for the four cylinder and P400, of course, for the straight six cylinder engine. Those power figures are pretty good. It is one of the smoother engines that I've tried out and it's supposedly more fuel efficient versus the old three liter supercharged V6 that Land Rover and Jaguar was using for many years. Now you only get one transmission option. It's an eight speed ZF automatic, one of the best transmissions in the business. And Land Rover says the fuel economy is 17 in the city, 22 on the highway. That's okay numbers. Remember this is a big block on wheels and she also isn't very light. This one here as it sits weighs in at around 5,300 pounds. Thankfully, if you guys need to tow, the Defender will tow a maximum of 8,200 pounds. So I was really excited a couple of years ago, nearly two years ago, when Land Rover finally took the wraps off of the reimagined, reborn Defender. I mean, as you guys know, the Jeep Wrangler, the Mercedes-Benz G-Wagon, the Ford Bronco coming back, Hummer eventually coming back. This is a segment that every manufacturer wants a piece out of because apparently everybody wants an off-road oriented, rugged lifestyle kind of SUV that also can go off-roading. Now, the difference between the Defender, of course, and a Wrangler and a Bronco is you cannot take the roof panels off from this vehicle. It's not technically a convertible, but Land Rover does offer it with uh, two different sizes, the Defender 90 two-door, like I said, and this 110 four-door, which is gonna be the more, you know, high sale volume one I'm imagining because it's more practical. And this SUV, you know, I didn't really know too much about it when I first got into it. This is my first time driving it simply because I never really had a chance to drive the original Defender. Ooh, 
Wow. And this one here, of course, being the Defender X, has the 3-liter Ingenium inline six. It's a turbocharged straight six with a 48-volt mild hybrid system. and has technically an electric supercharger, making almost 400 horsepower. So this is an SUV uh, that does have plenty of power. I mean, Land Rover says you'll get to 60 in around 5.8 seconds and it just loves to scream and rev. It's so smooth getting up there. So this is a really fantastic accelerating vehicle. I haven't tried out the four cylinder turbo, which has about 100 less horsepower than this. Land Rover says that'll dash to 16 around 7.7 .7 seconds. This is probably the powertrain you want um, that befits really the luxury image that you get with a Land Rover model. Now, of course, this new platform, this new Defender is nothing like the old one in the sense that it's now on a completely unibody construction. It's got a basically aluminum platform. It's Land Rover's bespoke platform for this vehicle. It's the stiffest platform they've ever built, they tell us. And you really feel that behind the wheel. This car, this truck, feels exceptionally smooth, exceptionally stiff. It feels like I could take this thing off-roading into any kind of conditions, really. Um, and just, it'll basically take a beating all day long. It also will tow a maximum of 8,200 pounds. The roof, for Christ's sakes, can hold 320 pounds on the roof dynamically, which means when I'm moving 600 pounds when I'm just sitting still. So the structure of this vehicle feels incredibly solid. The air suspension that's standard on the 110 also translates to an incredibly smooth ride quality. I'm just I'm genuinely blown away with how excellent this car feels, this truck feels. It feels even better to me than the last Range Rover that I drove, which has always been kind of the Mac Daddy of the Land Rover family. <laughs> it's so smooth. It's got a really quick shifting eight speed ZF transmission. I mean, this is just modern, the modern Defender that I expected it to drive. Like, this is so refined, this is so comfortable, it's so smooth, yet it's so damn cool. I mean, just driving this car around, I've only had it for the last couple of days, and oh my god, it basically just attracts attention everywhere I take it. Everybody stares at this thing, they give you a thumbs up because everybody wants this type of vehicle. So. I think Land Rover nailed it when it comes to the driving dynamics. I can't imagine what this thing is like off-roading, uh, but the majority of people are going to be driving it on the road in situations like this. The steering in the Defender is relatively quick considering this is a you know four-wheel drive SUV. Um, it doesn't translate much in terms of feel, but you do feel that the suspension is softer and you feel it kind of leaning around. The air suspension doesn't necessarily have a sport mode here. I can lower and raise the suspension at its you know, base setting, this truck offers around 8.7 inches of ground clearance. On its highest setting, you'll do 11.5 inches, which is what you're gonna need when you guys plan on taking this thing into serious off-road conditions. And in terms of the driver assistance tech, uh, my tester, of course, is fully optioned. So it has Land Rover's full speed range adaptive cruise control. It has lane keep assist, automatic emergency braking, blind spot monitoring with a cross traffic alert. All of the modern tech that you expect, yet look at the visibility in this thing. I love the view out of this truck. Now, I will say that the pillar here is a little bit large, but you have these gigantic side mirrors. I love the square shape. You can see out of the back relatively well, considering there's a massive full size spare tire back there. But I just get a sense that I'm driving something nostalgic, something that's really, really cool. And that's kind of what you feel when you drive a Jeep Wrangler. Uh, I imagine that's what you're gonna feel when you drive a Ford Bronco. Same thing I feel when I drive a G-Wagon. The G-Wagon, of course, is far more expensive than this vehicle, but still at 85 grand, this is not what I would say affordable. Keep in mind the Defender 90 starts at around half that price at around 50 or $46,000 for a base model. But even just the mid-range power, the transmission is so smooth, it's so responsive, it has so much low-end torque, and it's very responsive as well. There's very little lag for this car, and that's because of that electric supercharger. It just moves the truck out really well, much better in this vehicle versus the last Range Rover the Sport that I drove, which had this same powertrain. I drove that uh, almost two years ago, and I have to say it's so much better in this truck versus the Range Rover, so I'm impressed by that. But let's try just a quick, from a stop, acceleration run in this thing. It does have um, automatic start-stop. <laughs> wow. <laughs> For 
a beast that literally feels heavy, solid, secure, it's a box, this thing accelerates with authority. It has plenty of power, so I love this powertrain. I just, I don't, I haven't driven the four. I have to recommend the six. If you're gonna spend the money, you gotta spend another 12 grand and get the six cylinder. It is just fantastic. But even going around this corner here, the Defender handles it pretty well. I mean, yes, it does feel a little top heavy. But look at that transmission. It's just so responsive. I love, love driving this thing. I mean, other than the fact that Land Rover has very questionable build quality and reliability, this may be one of my new favorite SUVs that I've driven so far this year. I mean, last year it was the Genesis GV80. This year, it could very well be the Defender. This is one seriously cool car, and it doesn't surprise me one bit that they're in really high demand. Now, in terms of the fuel economy, in my few days that I had it, the trip computer saying I'm averaging 15.8. Now, that is a little bit lower than the 17.22. Um, on the highway, it got a little over 20 MPG. So again, it's a big box. You're not gonna buy this thing and expect the best fuel economy. It would be interesting if Land Rover decided to do a plug-in hybrid of this vehicle that has you know enough range to give you like 50 miles or so. But for now, this is plenty of engine for about 90% of people who are planning to buy this thing. It feels very much like a luxury SUV, yet it doesn't give up any of the durability, the ruggedness, the nostalgia that you get from the original Defender. So bravo Land Rover, you've done a phenomenal job with this new Defender. So I figured this wouldn't be a Land Rover review without showing you guys some kind of all weather or off-road situation, testing out this vehicle's capability. And I just so happened to be lucky enough to get slammed with a pretty significant snowstorm here in Pennsylvania. Uh, as you can see, the roads are not plowed, well they're plowed, but there's still a good amount of snow on the ground. We got nearly a foot uh, over the last couple of days. Uh, and it's just the perfect opportunity to test out the four-wheel drive system of the Defender. Remember, this comes with a full-time four-wheel drive system. It's always basically in four-wheel drive high. I can also lock the rear diff, the center diff. I can put it into a low range mode. And this is a pretty relatively steep grade right here. Um, I actually see a lot of people get stuck on this road constantly. And the cool thing about the Defender is it actually shows you what kind of an incline you're on. So right now it's showing we're going up a 3% grade, which may not look like much on camera. You can see most pe people are out with their Jeeps, with their trucks, but it's a beautiful winter wonderland here. So I'm actually going to come to a stop here on this slight incline of a hill. And you can see the traction control starts to cut power and send power to the wheel with the best grip. And aside from a little bit of shifting, it just kind of goes along about its business with very little fuss. In fact, I rarely even notice the, you know, six inches of snow on the ground that I'm seeing around here because the Defender just handles it with such ease. Now, I will say that the tires that this model comes with are Goodyear Wrangler all-terrain tires, and they are not the best in the snow. I'm noticing that, um, the vehicle still slides around a lot more than I would like it to, considering the fact that it does have an all-terrain tire. I would have expected it to be a little bit better. So uh, my recommendation is if you're always driving in these winter conditions in your Defender, consider putting an all-terrain winter tire on this vehicle. It would really help with the traction situation with braking, of course, with the slippage. But you can see it also stays pretty quiet in here. I mean, just driving around, you can hear some of the snow moving around, but this vehicle just feels so confident, so secure, so stable. And um, I think that's what's important about buying a vehicle like this. Land Rovers in general, to me, have always felt so secure and so stable. Uh, and in these kind of slippery conditions, it's just kind of amplified. I mean, look at the scenery, guys. This is absolutely beautiful. Um, this is just the perfect vehicle for this type of scenario. Surprisingly, the driver assistance tech is also still working. I can feel the uh, active lane keep assist trying to shove me back over because it sees the yellow line. I have to hug it a little bit because of this, you know, the, a foot of snow on the side of the road here. But uh, I'm surprised that the driver assistance still works. Now, I w there were times where the front sensors got completely caked on with snow and uh, it did flash a little uh, warning light that said front emergency braking unavailable due to sensor being covered which is normal when you're in these kind of situations. 
Now you can see these kind of conditions is not something I'd probably want to be stuck in something with front wheel drive or rear wheel drive with all season tires on it. Maybe with winter tires you'd be fine, but uh, there isn't too much snow on the ground, but it is pretty icy. The outside temperature right now is 28 degrees. Um, so some of the sleet that we got as well, you know, is refreezing. Uh, it's making for some pretty icy conditions. I'm also noticing this vehicle likes to kick around a lot of snow. You can literally see it in the side mirrors as it throws snow, snow around. So you may want to consider getting mud guards. This particular one that I'm driving does not have mud guards and you really will see all the snow that it kicks around. Even giving it a little throttle there, the side, the back end likes to step out because remember this system favors rear wheel drive a little bit still but the traction control kind of kicks in and it reins things in pretty quickly. Let's try the braking out with the anti-lock brakes. Foot is to the floor now and I'm still slowing down. Surprisingly, the ABS noise isn't quite as harsh as I expected it to be. <laughs> wow, this is such a fun car. I really wish I could find an empty parking lot to go do some donuts in this thing, but... <laughs> I'm impressed with the brakes. I mean, you put my foot down hard here, you can feel the ABS working. I mean, could you imagine like, what was it, like how horrible it was when we didn't have anti-lock brakes to kind of rein things in. Cars today are just so much more safe with stability control, traction control, anti-lock brakes. This is just uh, a much safer vehicle to drive in snowy conditions. You can see it's a winter wonderland out here. Very pretty, but uh, the plows have come through here and plowed a little bit. But it looks like there's still a couple inches of snow on the ground. Now you can turn off the traction control in this vehicle and have a little fun. <laughs> and she will definitely still slide around. You can tell that it's pretty slippery out here. <laughs> but Lear, I'll leave the traction control off right now and I'll just floor it. Let's see how it puts the power down. Now this is really just testing tire traction out. <laughs> Incredibly stable vehicle. I mean, this is exactly the kind of conditions you buy something like this, but the, the Defender just makes it so effortless. I mean, I'm out here with all the Jeeps and all the Jeep drivers like to stare at this thing because it is just an absolute joy to drive this thing in these kind of conditions. <laughs> and with the traction control off, you can feel it definitely likes to let the tail end step out a lot more. <laughs> it's pretty slick out here, so... Again, these tires are not wonderful in the snow. They get the job done, but I would recommend leaving the traction control on and going with a uh, snow tire if you're gonna be in these kind of conditions all the time. So nearly two years ago, when Land Rover first took the wraps off of the all new Defender, I was really impressed with it initially at the auto show. And I have to say, after spending a few days with this vehicle in person and actually driving it and being, getting a chance to live with it, I was blown away with not only the, des the design of this vehicle, but I'm kind of blown away by the entire package of the Defender in general. I think it's just the right size. I think the four-door model is going to give a lot of Americans exactly the type of vehicle that they need. It gives you basically everything that you like about a Jeep Wrangler, the off-road capability, the rugged image, but it also kind of throws in some more refinement. You get the luxury uh, that you expect with Land Rover. You get uh, much more horsepower and torque from that turbocharged straight six-cylinder engine. And I also really like the interior of this car. At first, I thought it was a little cheap from certain angles, but after living with it, the new infotainment system is improved. The seats are pretty comfortable. It got decent gas mileage, although on the highway, I couldn't get it to get anywhere near the 22 miles per gallon that the EPA says. I got around 19, 20 miles per the gallon. And really, I found very little that I didn't like about the Defender, except if you guys are going to consider the fact that Land Rover typically isn't known for offering strong build quality and reliability. Now, I will say in my couple days that I had this thing, it didn't give me any problems outside from a little rattle in the dash or in the driver's side door panel, which I'll chalk down to maybe an early pre-production model. But really, when it comes down to the pricing, this is where the Land Rover is going to obviously cost more than something like a Jeep Wrangler. As this one sits here, the fully loaded Defender 110 uh, X model with basically everything, stickers for around 85 
$85,000. Now, $85,000 is around $25,000 more expensive than a fully loaded Jeep Wrangler. Now, of course, if you guys want to go for the Defender 90, the base model, that'll start at around $46,100 plus destination. That actually is not bad. You're looking at around $16,000 more than a Jeep. I think at that price point, the Defender is worth the extra upcharge because this is a Land Rover. However, you should know that the base Defender a 90 uh, doesn't have cruise control and it has cloth seats. You have to, again, step up to at least an SE model to get those premium touches. But really, there's a lot of different ways you can customize your Defender. Land Rover offers different adventure packages and endurance packages and whatnot to make this thing truly customizable, which is what you expect in this segment. Jeep owners, of course, have been you know, enjoying that kind of feature and Land Rover is going to give customers that option as well. So really, if you guys are looking for an off-road oriented vehicle like a Jeep Wrangler, but you want something that's British and a little bit more refined, the new Defender should easily be at the top of your list. But with all that said, I hope you guys have enjoyed my full overview on this 2021 Land Rover Defender 110. If you're also looking to see the latest cars I'm testing, be sure to follow me on Instagram at redline underscore reviews, like us on Facebook, and as always guys, please keep subscribing to the Redline Reviews YouTube channel for all the latest reviews. Thank you so much for watching. I'll catch you all in the next video. Besides the name, this shares nothing with the original Defender because it's riding on an all aluminum monocoque uh, unit body construct mono mono block <laughs> mono <Monocoque>. mono block. <laughs> okay. Sorry. Yeah, you're, you're working out your kinks. Um, Should I start from? The